Hello everyone, and welcome to Storytime with Loki. I'm here with uh, Zenrot. It's me. Yes, do you want to say anything to the people, by the way, since you're still in exile in Twitter? Is everyone else... Oh, no, not really. <laughs> not really? Not really. Nothing to say to people except for go watch your coin Coinpoil Gang videos? Yeah, go watch that video. There you go. I do things in it. You do things in it. Uh, yeah. You represent the coin Coinpoil Gang. Uh, so previously, we ta- I, t- I, I got the Mimi Force together and I was able to tell the Taco Bell story, the long-awaited Taco Bell story about my Taco Bell that's nearby. So we'll be talking about something different today. Uh, I didn't really give a lead into what it would be. I said McDonald's at the end, but I don't really have many McDonald's stories. A lot of them are usually like, they fuck up my order, <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> they do do that. They do do that a whole bunch, and besides the one time uh, a bunch of kids tried to start a war with an Asian man, there's really not much that has happened at the McDonald's besides a lot of fucked up orders. Um, so today I figured I'm going to tell a story about uh, specifically my dad, because I, I have a lot of stories with him, and specifically also uh, about me going to the theaters with my dad. So recently i've been going to the theaters a whole bunch with my brother and sister and seeing a whole bunch of movies that uh, whatever movies we could find midsummer uh is the most recent one we saw but basically anything we can see and it's up to a certain point because we were unable to see detective pikachu in time before it left theaters oh uh, that's a shame yeah we tried so hard to detective make it pikachu. yeah we tried so hard to make it to detective pikachu but going to the theaters a bunch reminded me of um, how, how I used to go to the theaters. So back in the day, back when you had to actually like pay uh, ticket prices to go to the movie theaters, and you didn't have to use like an app or something to say like I have like a subscription to this theater now, so I can just go <laughs> as many times as I want. I used to go with my dad, and uh, I'll tell two different ones. The first one is back. This is back when I was a kid. So back when I was a kid, I don't know if you remember if this was the same way when you were growing up. But when um, I was going for elementary school, they did a whole bunch of things of like, um, children beware because strangers are coming to take you at any given time. <laughs> uh, sort of, sort of. There was a lot of stranger danger type stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just generally like don't don't get in cars with people you don't know. Yeah, lest you be killed. Exactly. And as a kid, I was a very, like, um, what's the right way of saying? Naive is a nice way of saying idiot. So I was very naive. Oh, right, right, yeah. <laughs> naive is the right way of saying did dumb shit a lot. Yeah. So I used to, uh, so when I was a kid, um, I, like, I want to say the day before they taught us about Stranger Danger, I actually made friends with a uh, um, an older gentleman at the school who was waiting to pick up his granddaughter. And I ended up becoming friends with him, and I used to, like, uh, talk about WCW and trade wrestling magazines with him. My mom knew him, too, uh, as well. Uh, he was a very nice old man, but I, like, basically went up to an older stranger. Play- uh, he was, like, playing on a, like, Tiger Electronics poker game, and that was the first time I ever saw an adult play what I was thinking was a Game Boy. <laughs> and so I was like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I thought only we did this. So I ended up becoming friends with a stranger, and then the next day we learned about Stranger Danger, and they're like, don't talk to anyone you don't know. And I was like, oh my god, I could have been killed. <laughs> if I, I... <laughs> so for a good amount of my life, up until, let's say, around high school, I had assumed that at any point a stranger was going to take me into their car and uh, just you know drive away with me. So knowing that, that's my mindset. Me and my dad went to the theater one time and um, he told me to look after the seats. And he told me, also, we like to show up really early. I think for this specific movie, we showed up 45 minutes early to save our seats. Okay. <laughs> so we're That in, is very early. That is very early. So we were 45 minutes early. So we go in there, we take our seats. And then my dad's like, okay, um, I'm going to go... I'm going to go. I need you to look after the seats, though. Make sure that nobody takes the seat. Uh, it's very important. And I said, is it okay to really leave me by myself? And by that point, he was already gone. <laughs> he was already gone <laughs> to, to do something. So now I'm alone in a, in a dark theater. And I'm just going like, if I pretend to act tough, nobody will kidnap me because no one wants to take a tough kid. So <laughs> I'm sitting in the dark trying to put on a tough face. And then a mother and her kid shows up. And to say exactly where I was sitting, 
there were a lot of seats available. But uh, a mother and her kid came up to me and they said, oh, hello, uh, excuse me. And I was like, and then I looked and I was like, yeah, <laughs> what? what would you like? Also, I'm seven at this point. So I'm a seven year old trying to act tough. And he goes, um, I think there was some weird seating thing. Okay, so it was actually a very busy movie. I think, I don't remember the exact movie we were seeing, but it was busy. But that we were sitting in a way that was like, um... We were in two seats, and then the seat to the left and the seat to the right of us were available, but then the other seats weren't. So the mother and her son basically asked me, "Is like, hey, um, is anyone sitting in the other seats? I was like, yes, uh, my dad. And I was, I think I tried to make it seem like, oh, my big burly dad was also coming here, so if you don't... <laughs> Don't try and start anything, but I was like, oh yeah, my dad sits here, uh, so it's taken. And then the mother said, hey, is there any way for you to, like, to move over? So, you know, because there's, like, we noticed that there's, like, specifically the space you're taking, um, it, uh, it's, it's made it so that the seat on the left and the seat on the right can only fit one person, but if you actually just move slightly, that way four people can fit in, and we don't want to take your dad's seat, we just want to take the other two seats. And uh, she had very sound logic. And then I looked, I like gave it a while, and I said, "No." <laughs> and she was like, "Okay." And then her son, who I want to say was like two years older than me, was like, "But why can't you move?" And she, then she's like, "It's okay. We'll just leave him alone." <laughs> and so they went to go find another seat, and then finally, I want to say. <laughs> 30 minutes later, my father shows up because he was gone for a really fucking long time. I had no idea where he was. I think now, now, if I were to guess, he was at the arcade playing and he had left me there to look after the seats. Already? And, yeah. And so my dad comes in and he's like, okay, did uh, anything happen? He's like, dad, you miss it. There was a strange lady with a kid. I don't know if it was son, if she took it. I don't know what was happening in that situation. I don't know. But they told me, like, oh, yeah, they were trying to say, like, is it possible for you to move over? And I, I told them no. And then my dad looks at me and goes, like, why didn't you move over? <laughs> He's like, that's that, that one. <laughs> and I, I looked at him and was like, what do you mean? You told me specifically, like, I don't move from this seat. And if what, what would happen if you're, like, you came back and your son was suddenly with a strange lady and her son? What would you do? He's like, it's like son, you, 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 got, you were thinking too hard on this. You didn't need to worry about it that much. It's like, I don't know. You didn't see her eyes. You didn't see her crazy kidnapping eyes. Dangerous. Dangerous. And that dangerous the, woman. Extremely dangerous woman. And uh, that was the first, one of my earliest memories of him going to the theater. And then this, uh, this other one, which is, I think, the number one uh, theater experience. If you've ever wanted to sum up the relationship between me and my dad, it's specifically this story. So we go to, um, now at this point, I want to say I'm around 15, 15 to 16 year, years old. We go to the movie theaters, uh, we go inside, and then I want to get some food. And my dad goes like, uh, okay, can you also get me popcorn and stuff? And I was like, yeah, that that's not a problem. I can do that, no problem. And he's like, also a drink. I'm like, yeah, sure. Don't worry. Do you just reserve the seats and I'll go up there and it's not going to be a problem. At this point, I had gone out of my stranger danger uh, <laughs> phase and I was no longer uh -huh. worried if someone was going to take me from this theater. I knew that no one was going to be able to lift me up at this point. <laughs> at this point, 300 pounds, <laughs> no one was going to take me. So I go get the I go get the food and then uh, I ask for specifically, can I have a tray? And they said, uh, we don't have one. So I'm sorry, we don't have one right now available. So then I look at what was basically, I had got myself um, a drink, my father a drink, a popcorn, and then I also got nachos. And so I had a shit ton of stuff. And I was like, how the fuck am I going to carry this all the way to my dad? <laughs> like, it, like we, uh, the theater specifically located was pretty far away. And I also still had to fill this shit, the shit, the drink up, because um, you have to go into the fountain drink and actually fill it up yourself. Uh, which is good, because when you're leaving the theater, that means you get a free refill. Uh, which helps offset the cost of it being like fucking ten dollars or something, <laughs> whatever it was in the two thousands. It was expensive though. <laughs> so I go, okay, I figure this out, and then eventually what I figured out was that if I balance the popcorn and the nachos on my like, I put the nachos on like my forearms, and then I balance the popcorn on my chin, and then I um 
put the two drinks in my hand, and then I can walk up. And also specifically just to say, when I told my dad I was going to go to the concession stands, we had already had the seats. So we were sitting in the seats, and I said, I'm going to go, and then uh, that's how we ended up going. So then I knew where to go. So I started making my trek there, and I'm doing, like, the most cautious walk ever, trying to get back to where my father is. And then eventually, when I get up there, uh, I start making... It's taking me a long ass time. I think I'm, it takes me five minutes to finally enter the theater itself, <laughs> where, where the screening is taking place. And I start slowly making my way up the stairs. Also, I have a deep fear of stairs. If I can't see my feet, then I start to go like, oh my god, I'm going to die and trip, and this is how I'm going to die. <laughs> this is how I'm going to die. Did you fall down the stairs or something? No, but it's the the fear of falling down the stairs. So I'm actually taking about a minute to go up these stairs at a time. I am doing the most cautious, like, okay, going up, going up. Okay, foot down, foot down, foot down, foot down. All right. Okay, lifting the other foot, the other foot. Okay, we are on one step, and now let's keep going up. Eventually, my dad realizes when I'm halfway up the steps. He, my dad also likes to sit all the way in the fucking back, so I'm climbing a shit ton of stairs trying to get to him. So I get I get everything, and then finally my dad realizes halfway in is that um, that he I need help. So he comes get gets it. He's he's laughing a little bit, and then when we sit down, I'm like, all right, we made it. It's all good. You helped me out, thank you. And my dad says, um, so do you want to know why it took me a while to help you? I was like, yeah, I would like to actually know because I've been wondering why you just let your son do this when you could see clearly that I was in uh, a lot of trouble. He said, um, all I saw was I just saw a very big person with a lot of stuff because the popcorn was covering my face. So you couldn't actually see it was me. He just uh, he just saw a very big person struggle to get up and he was laughing his ass off until someone who was in the theater before us said to him, "Isn't that your son?" And then he took a, <laughs> and then he took a closer look and said, "Oh my god, that is my son." And he went to go help me. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So that is some good old uh, theater magic with me and my dad and I have a lot of other things of my dad. I think I've, at some point I should probably tell a positive dad story, but a lot of my dad stories are him in some way screwed, like, screwing up in some way. <laughs> my, I love my father, by the way. He's an extremely hardworking man. He's also sometimes very bad at just, like, um, uh, not being able to, like, figure out how the best way to deal with his kids in the sense of, like, uh, he'll do things like, um, we'll be at Best Buy and I say, okay, dad, look after our little brother and it's Nux and Nux is around five. And he's like, okay. And then I go, all right, uh, dad, where's Nux? And he's like, I don't know. I think I lost him. And I said, dad, did you seriously lose a five-year-old at Best Buy? He was right next to you. How are you going to lose your son? And he's like, don't worry. I think he's somewhere in the video game area. and He'll show up eventually. Turn up. He'll turn up, and thankfully he did. Um, so he's done a lot of that. I think he's also said in multiple occasions that uh, there was one time he hit my head on a doorknob when I was a baby. And then one time he was uh, lifting my sister up into the air so hard he hit her on top of the ceiling. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so a lot of it, a lot of Ouch. times he, yeah, he just accidentally, he's also lost us multiple times, I think, over this. I think every single one of us has been lost at one point. <laughs> uh, one time during uh, when we went to go visit uh, Universal City on my birthday, uh, we went to go line up for Jurassic Park, and I was with my cousin and my uncle, who was his brother, because uh, I have a lot of uncles, so I have to specify. And he said, uh, I'm not feeling very well. I'll see you at the end of the ride. And we said, cool. Not knowing that the end of the ride of Jurassic Park was not at the beginning of Jurassic Park. So we didn't know where he was, and we didn't know where the other family was because no, none of us had a cell phone. So for the last uh, two hours of my birthday, I was lost in Universal City, and I was like, oh my god, this is my my worst dream come true. I'm going to live in Universal for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm never going to go home. I'm going to have to become like some kind of hobo in Universal City. It's going to be awful. <laughs> and then eventually we did find each other. Happy end to that story. My mom was just Goodness, kind of... I was best. Yeah. 
uh, it was a very hard. I think by the end of it, I was crying, and then when I saw my mom, I was like, "Oh my god, she's gonna be so happy to see me." She was pissed <laughs> that I had. <laughs> So I was like, I need a hug right now. She's like, I can't believe that we had to go through looking for you for all of this. I was like, please, just support me in this right now. It's my birthday. I need your help, Mom, please. It's not my fault. It's our fucking, it's my dad. <laughs> like, he's the one who lost us. So there you go. There's some stories about my dad. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you have someone uh, shared, I actually want to share it before we end this just because someone was so kind enough to talk about. So when we talked about Taco Bell, I said how there's a lot of homeless people in Taco Bell because if you're homeless, going to Taco Bell is a very good deal. Like it's a very good thing to go to. And someone, a good old uh, user called Super Vegito shared his story that he was homeless and he used to go to Taco Bell and it was a grace for him when he went to go. So he, I'm going to share one of the stories he had here because I thought it was very funny. So back in the day, Taco Bell used to have this thing where if you put a quarter in and if you had like a little, there was like a little machine and if you got it in an exact right place, you got a free burrito. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever gone to a Taco Bell? Uh, yes, in my life, if I have. I don't know the specific specific mechanics of the machine that you're talking about yeah it, 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 they don't have them anymore but for super vegeto did not know that when he went back to taco bell so he said this is his stories uh i don't think any of them exist anymore i went in one day and got a 25 cent burrito the drop win and in most uh in the most awkward moment ever he tried to look for it and he stared at the employee trying to find if he could find it and then he realized that it wasn't it didn't exist <laughs> And he just said, oh, and he walked out of the Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Thank you for sharing that story. And thank you, anyone who comments as well. And we'll join us next time for another good old story. So now we say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.